wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about some of the work that I've been engaged in for the last nine or 10 years. This work is all about constructing robots that can assist children who are at risk for cerebral palsy learn how to crawl. And in particular, we want to help them learn how to crawl on a time scale that is commensurate with their typically developing peers. So first off, on the typically developing side, learning to crawl is really, uh, in part, a reinforcement learning process. So initially, infants will engage in activities that we refer to as motor babbling. So this is happening at two months, three months, four months of age. And uh, this motor babbling involves almost random movements of their legs and arms and trunk. And occasionally these movements result in something interesting happening. So something interesting might be the body might roll a little bit. And these novel things happening turn out to be uh, quite rewarding. Over time, the rewards really transfer from these very simple kinds of activities uh, to um, much more higher level kinds of activities like being able to reach out and grasp a toy or mom's car keys uh, or being able to navigate over, locomote over to the, the toy before grasping it. And these rewards in general are, are very important. They drive the infant to practice a whole variety of different motor skills and just as a result of starting to locomote around the environment, it also forces them to have a whole new set of experiences actually navigating through that environment. And, and so that we think forces the infants to start to develop interesting spatial kinds of skills. For children who are at risk for cerebral palsy, these initial exploratory movements generally do not result in anything interesting happening. And what this means is that uh, these infants show a pretty dramatic delay in the onset of their crawling skills. And, and we can see in, in practice, we can see uh, impacts in, in learning certainly crawling skills, but other kinds of motor skills, so, social skills, as well as uh, the development of these spatial skills. Now our, our robot, I'm gonna give you a very high level view of, of what's happening in this picture. Uh, what's hiding underneath each of these legs here is uh, a, a, a wheel. Uh, there's also a leg that you can't really see back behind the infant. Uh, these three points are the only points of contact between the, the robot and the ground. This platform that the infant is on is actually suspended above the ground a little bit. Between the the platform and the rest of the robot, there's a six axis force torque sensor hiding right in here. So this allows us to tell when the infant is trying to push up, when the infant is trying to pull in some direction, so pulling across the ground uh, or trying to turn the, the robot. We also have a variety of sensors uh, built into the system. There are cameras that allow us to record behavioral data we also have an EEG head net that allows us to collect at least a very coarse level what's going on inside the brain as the infant is navigating and, and learning uh, to, to uh, engage in crawling type skills. There, the infant here is also wearing, you can see it along the arm here and along the leg, the infant is wearing a motion capture suit. And this suit allows us to uh, to actually look at the posture of the infant in real time. So, so the suit is composed of a set of inertial measurement units. There are, in, in some cases, we have up to 12 of these IMUs scattered throughout the, the motion capture suit. We uh, are able to collect the uh, posture information at a rate of 50 hertz. So every 20 milliseconds, we have a new estimate of the locations of, uh, of, the, uh, of the wrists, of the shoulders, of the feet, of, of the ankles and the knees. And also in real time, we're able to uh, recognize movements that the infant is generating that are crawling-like to some degree. Now, the 
infant interacts with the robot in a variety of different ways. We have three different modes. We can turn on different subsets of them uh, depending upon the experimental condition that we're in currently testing. The, the first is what we refer to as force control. So if the infant is uh, trying to pull forward, the robot will respond by moving the, the infant's body in a forward direction at a velocity that's proportional to how much they're pulling. Likewise, if the infant is trying to uh, make a turn, so generating a, a torque uh, to the left or to the right, the, the robot will, will turn at a velocity that is proportional to how much torque the infant is generating. Now power steering, uh, this also looks at these forces that the infant is generating. The, the difference here is that as, as soon as the infant starts to pull above some threshold force, say in the forward direction, the robot will recognize that uh, as an intent to make a forward body movement and carry the infant for about a second period of time uh, for a distance of about five centimeters or 10 centimeters. For the gesture-based control, we actually use the motion capture suit. And, and in particular, if we can, if, if we detect that the infant is trying to make a forward crawling motion, so they might cast their hands out and drop them down and pull forward, even if they're not in contact with the ground, we can recognize that gesture and have the robot respond as, as if the infant was pulling against the ground. So the, the intent with all three levels of interaction here is to have surprising things happen, in particular, moving of uh, the infant's body in some direction. And, and the, 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 the larger intent is then to have the infant uh, be uh, engaged by these rewards that she's receiving. And hopefully she'll uh, continue to practice the, the movements until they're much more refined. And, and this should be the case with both our typically developing infants as well as with our uh, infants who are at risk for cerebral palsy. On the machine learning side of things, there are lots of different kinds of questions we can be asking. This first question we have actually spent some time on, and we actually have some of these um, models running in real time on our robot now. Uh, the idea here is to look at the motion capture data, kinematic data is the, another term for this, and make predictions about the intent of uh, what the infant is trying to do, and, and then use that to uh, drive the robot in a particular direction. We could also, for example, look at how the robot is moving, how the infant is moving, and make some predictions about whether the infant is trying to uh, reach a toy that is not too far away from them. Likewise, for the, the EEG brain data that we're collecting, we'd like to be able to look at that and make predictions about how the infant is moving, say, moving their left arm versus their right arm, or their left arm in some particular direction. Or we might try to make some predictions about visual attention based on this EEG data. Okay, so this is a very high level view of some of the work that we've been doing. We'll start looking here in a moment at uh, some of the data that, that we actually gather during these experiments. 